You're listening to the gag on this podcast. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why you'd get upset about it. I think you're at your your mom's. Grandma's? Yeah. I'm at my grandma's. Look at Rob knowing his shit. Well, it looks like a grandma house. It does. All the knickknacks on top, I think. Is that yeah. knickknacks or is that wallpaper? Uh, wallpaper. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It also looks like she has the big plastic jug, jug of Folgers in the background. That's tip. That was my grandma and grandpa all the What's way. What's stored was in there, fun. though? What is stored in the can? No, we have a That's Keurig. True. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. so what's in the can? <laughs> <laughs> like Mexican <laughs> butter, butter containers, you know, oh. you never know what you're going to get. Open it up. Oh. It's got fucking screws, a sewing kit. And you're like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> I want right? sugar cookies. Damn Look it. at all that. She's got all her mm-hmm. knickknacks in there. Yeah, that's grandma right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Sadly, I have one of those. My pops are in it, though. Okay. Mm-hmm. Your pop. Oh, my God. Stop it. <laughs> ah, This is the gag on this podcast. Woo. Woo. Episode description. We'll have the show and guest social media. Uh, follow us everywhere at gag on this underscore pod. Uh, Facebook at gag on this pod. Like what you hear, leave a review. Hate what you hear, go fuck yourself. Um, yeah, because nobody died. So I was gonna let's see. Um, I was gonna say Salman Rushdie needs a new security guard. Ouch! <clears throat> but he survived, a little fucker. Um, <laughs> I'm your host, Big Nick. We are joined by the luscious Italian stallion that is Danny T. Yo yo, whoop whoop. <laughs> I think that's the first time a guest has actually gone like whoop whoop to Danny. Hey, love <laughs> Danny. That's right. Well, if it weren't for Danny, you wouldn't be on. So thank you, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nick. <laughs> um, uh, we got co-host of Stand Up Dads, my Portuguese lover Robert. Hello. Who can join us? Yay. Yay. No soccer today. Uh, so when it's 105, they cancel practice. It's 104, and I'm like, I'm not splitting hairs. We're not going. Nah. And he has homework. So mm. I thought he was already like cut from the team, probably for fighting someone. No, he's <laughs> actually he <laughs> behaves on the team. He's just being an asshole at school. I guess he oh. got in trouble also for throwing rocks at a kid. All right, those two oh, stepping wrong. on the guest's intro. <laughs> My Jesus. I haven't even introduced our guest yet. Our guest is the hilarious goddamn Tess Frey. Is it Frey or Fry? Frey. Goddamn right. You had it right. I know my shoot. <clears throat> uh, before we begin, though, I do want Rob to share what Owen did in class because I think that's fucking great. Well, so last week he got in trouble for saying fuck, and that was like two days into school starting. And I miss this. How old is Owen? Nine. Okay. And uh, he's old enough to know better. That's for yeah, sure. Yeah, I have a 10 year old. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And uh, I guess today he turned in a paper and instead of writing Owen on the top of his uh, page, he wrote bunghole. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, he's creative. So, yeah, our te- his teacher loves us. We've already gotten emails from her and it's just fucked. <laughs> I guess he hit a kid yesterday. The principal, when I went to pick him up, the principal walked him out and uh, I guess they were play- playing freeze tag and he didn't like the way someone tagged him. So he hit him. So I'm just going to call CPS and tell him to take him because I'm fucking up. (laughs) I felt that challenge a few years ago. I used to tell my family every birthday, Christmas, uh, we need some money for that boy's ranch we're saving for. Seriously, (laughs) all that college money is really going to be bail money. Right. Right. We'll see. Sometimes you need it. Yeah. Oh, and what's funny is that parents always tell me to have kids. Doesn't sound no. really good. <laughs> I've not. never told you to have kids. <laughs> no one has ever here said have children. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, you won't get that here either. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think that's great because most parents I know, yeah, they're just like, they're like, oh, they're they're so great. And then five minutes later, it's the fucking worst thing I've ever done. <laughs> Don't do it. Run away. But then they, you know, run up and give you a hug and it just like fucker. And, you know, I was just about to drop you off at the fire department. And now I can't. right. I feel it. 
Yeah, because the fire department has those creepy signs that look like it's hugging a kid. <laughs> Do they still so like every parent will fit in the safe box though? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, he's little. Uh, Especially my chunky <laughs> now. My chunky's not. <laughs> Is there really a box? No, you, I thought I you just like leave them and then press the ringer and run away. Originally, some places had like a box, like it had like mm. a slider and you could put the baby and then slide it. And then it indicated inside that oh, there was yeah. something in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember that. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. I, I did that at the SPCA. Uh, we saw a cat that got hit by a car and we couldn't help it. But oh, we, they do we, have we, boxes like that. Yeah. There that you can just put the dog in. I'm pretty sure they came and saw that a dead be- cat in there, but. We tried. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay. We tried. Holy there shit. Is. Yeah. There. Like you just slide um, your baby in there and call it a day. Yeah. Hey, that's yeah. what happens when you ban abortion, man. Well, cause think about it. If it's freezing cold outside and you just yeah. drop the baby off at the door, what if somebody's taking a massive shit? And get to that baby for twenty minutes. Yeah, well, they're out fighting a fire. Hell of bad. Yeah, they may not even triggers. be there. They'll be okay. <laughs> I'm assuming they're not airtight. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way. They to poke holes. Babies. There's yeah. instructions to poke holes once you yeah. it. <laughs> All right. Um. So, uh, Tess, I did see that you took the storytelling class, and Robert is an alumnus of that. Ah, yeah. oh, like yes. Was the first class. Hmm. Yeah, that How'd was my like first it? class. I I enjoyed it. Uh Johnny Taylor is definitely someone who you should be taught very early mm-hmm. on in the game. Yeah. He gives you some uh I think spit to your comedy. <laughs> um and then I took uh Keith Lowell Jensen's class right after. And I will say um great brothers on stage but totally different teachers oh yeah oh yeah and i love both their styles Mm -hmm. you know i think that they um which one did you like more you know they both had their own neither of them listen so just yeah no one listens to this they've been on the show but they don't listen (laughs) no no no. honestly i i think both of them had their own style you know Mm -hmm. what i mean who do i think i could learn uh, again from honestly i would say keith Mm-hmm. Just because of his teaching style was more tuned to how I learn, whereas Johnny's more of just do it, you know, kind mm-hmm. of a thing. I think I'd like to take Johnny's class again uh, once my year hits, which will be in November. So um, I'm going to teach a class. Time. You could take my you class. You need to, Danny. Fuck yeah. Uh, <laughs> she doesn't need a bigger head than she's already got. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you run your mouth for two hours every week. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> I could just, just see the class like somebody will be like, this is my joke. Read it. And Danny's like, that's shit. Throw it away. Start <laughs> over. <laughs> hey, that's Johnny's approach. Yeah. Is it really? You know? yeah absolutely Johnny's oh. like you know he's like he's like you're gonna get up there and you're gonna bomb it's gonna be shit you know <laughs> just no. do it, you know and then he was like some people are gonna tell you to go do open mic fuck it just just get up there <laughs> yeah fuck it is yeah, usually it. what it comes down to fuck it <laughs> but just... i didn't even do open mics until i took keith's class oh, keith wow. was the one that pushed do the work do the work I went to scoreboards for the first time when Matt Medina was still around in the DTW world. And I got to see his little going away improv skit of coach Padilla or whatever. (laughs) (laughs) And it was amazing. It was amazing to pop my cherry that night, like at open mic. It was, it was a thrill. It was. And then I just, you know, was embraced by the sack comics. You know, Danny D was one of the first few that talked to me and Jess Roberts was the first that night at scoreboard. She came up to me afterwards, stayed, listened to my set, gave me some notes. So I, day one, I felt the love. What was your story for Johnny's class? I mean, not the whole thing, just. Yeah. (laughs) I had a work event um, Mm -hmm. when I first started like rubbing elbows in the upper level of my career right Mm -hmm. um i had to go to a golf tournament unexpectedly one of the golfers got pregnant i got moved up into the beverage cart yeah let's just say i threw the bitch out of my cart (laughs) in the emergency room and it was a whole story about that so lovely fucking becky yeah (laughs) it's always some chick named becky it's always some chick named fucking (laughs) becky 
<laughs> yeah. So that was my first thing. And so it was, um, I ad libbed a lot in mm-hmm. the story, kind of, um, uh, stretched it a lot, made, made some callbacks, um, you know, with the, the help of Johnny and, um, it was an honor for me to close his show. It, it told nice. me a lot when he was doing his lineup. Um, so yeah. And then, uh, like I said, it was, it was a great time, especially at the punchline to do the oh, punchline yeah. first time as your stage, you know? Yeah. I, I have to do it in the callback room. Better sense. So <laughs> that's not I even open gypped. anymore. What? The callback bar is not even open. Why? Because I don't know. COVID. He'll do, he'll do smaller shows there. Mm-hmm. The class, if the class doesn't have that many people on the ticket list, that's where mine was mm-hmm. for Johnny's was at okay. the call bar. Got it. Oh. And then I did punchline. Sorry. Stage for Keith's, but I've done them both. Cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was fun. Where'd you take Keith's class at? Punchline. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I'm curious what, cause we took, that's how Rob and I met. We took mm-hmm. Keith's class. Was it just, like the class we took, which was he taught you how to be on stage and then you just sat around and told your joke and people tagged it. Kind of, kind of. But um, see, like I was a newbie newbie. And so like even hearing things about callbacks and um, ways to um, handle a heckler, mm-hmm. um, you know, how to kind of alleviate yourself out of a bomb or a down spiral or a non-reply from the audience, things like that was what I was looking for. Sure. You know, those vulnerability um, things that we fear when we go up on stage, right? Johnny didn't touch on those. Keith yeah. did a lot in his class. And then, like I said, he was the one pushing for open mics too. And then that changed my whole comedy mm-hmm. venture with just open mics cool. mm-hmm. yeah i think oh, yeah. i think danny's the only one that hasn't taken a class. I was just she's born. the only one actually doing it yeah <laughs> <laughs> well, there you just, go <laughs> you know sometimes it just comes natural you don't need to take a fucking class no you just <laughs> need to hop on a roast and get your ass torn up i'm not doing it <laughs> not doing any more roast battles I am not at that level yet. <laughs> and I'm already, I'm one for one. <laughs> FYI. I beat Stephen Milani and I got beat by Zach Edlow. Whatever happened to that fucker? He showed up at Vince's on Friday night, actually. To so watch her to go up. No, just to, he was kind of freaking out. I don't know. All right. Not in a good spot, but he was like, oh, I threw my cell phone away. And I'm like, you're an idiot. So I was like, I'm going to go sing karaoke with the girls. I got to go. <laughs> but he's alive good for him barely it sounds like <laughs> <laughs> so uh tess your older kid i take it uh went to bellerman no my dad oh no shit fuck dad. that is school in san jose yep my dad yeah. um we're from the central valley small mm-hmm. town called mendota and he went to bellerman Wow. I mean, that's All pretty fucking good. <laughs> yeah. What is is that a high school? Yeah. It's a it's a Catholic private high school. And so he would live there on campus um and go to school. Oh shit, that's where you should send Owen. (laughs) It's Catholic. (laughs) Oh yeah. I guess there's like a song for Bellarmine boys back in the day. Like, I don't know. There was like a a, some kind of chanting song. Someone sang it to me one time and I was just like, okay, that was a little creepy. They chant while they're getting butt fucked by the Uh, no. (laughs) I went to Moreau, which is, you know, another private Catholic school in the Bay Area. And remember going to a football camp and they had a bunch of guys from a school called archbishop midi and these guys were like fucking ogres and they had a song was uh i think it was a midi man's a mighty man they uh their wives are dirty bitches they scratch their ass with broken glass just because it itches and these are 15 year old kids saying this yeah, shit. that's what i'm saying it's not a, it's, it wasn't an appropriate chant it's what no I yeah <laughs> <laughs> so, like a good time. yeah uh-huh. i remembered that 35 years later so what the fuck uh, <laughs> my dad's the reason why i got into comedy mm, really yeah he passed away a year in june and i went through my first little bout of depression i guess and kind of just reflected on things and my dad was an only child and my mom was the oldest of six so two different lifestyles two different parents mm-hmm. And I thought to myself, I don't want to be like him. I don't want to be like her. 
you know, I got to find my middle ground and I do so much for everybody else in my family or who's connected to me. So I go, I got to do something for me. And Johnny's class came up. Nice. I'm all, I got a funny story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then here I am. <laughs> so now you're the biggest star ever. You're on the gag on this yeah. podcast. What? <laughs> <laughs> your, your career from here is just going to go soaring. In I spite of this, soaring. your future is bright. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We get listens. We get, you know, the same downloads every week. Roughly. For those of those that come do see me on stage, they don't know me as Tess Frey. They know stage you as name tickles? I've been Tess Tickles, yes. Because she's a dirty, dirty hoe. <laughs> well, when I started thinking about a name that was going to captivate people and get people's attention, you know, when you're doing these open mics and you're in a loud bar and stuff like that, I don't know. There's just something about getting up there, yelling out, what's up, wherever I'm at. I'm Tess Tickles. <laughs> Everyone shuts up. Yeah. <laughs> Who wants to hear what I got to say? <laughs> They're not disappointed. <laughs> but... <laughs> now, I had a friend in high school, whenever I'd come into a party, he'd yell at the top of his lungs, Tess Tickles. And I hated it for the reason why he was saying it. Right? But as I was thinking about a stage name, it came to me and I'm all, well, fucking thanks, Saki. I think it'll work. So his name was Saki. Saki Salceda. I almost just said that. (laughs) Beat you to it. I know. Damn it. S A K I. Saki Salceda. Saki. So when you first met Danny D, was she uh, hammered? I'm assuming. No. Nope. On mushrooms. I don't think I've ever seen Danny hammered. You would all bullshit. No. Danny doesn't. We've ever seen her not hammered. I'm not hammered right now, assholes. You stoned? You at your grandma's. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I am at my grandma's. But uh, no, I don't drink as much these days, boys. Oh. I mean, we, we've we drank together. We've done yeah. other things together. But, you know, nothing hammery. We've whoa, shroomed whoa. together. We'll calm was, it down, Nick. I was about to say, I was calm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't just, don't just <laughs> gloss over that. Out there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Make it pillow late. fights, you know. Oh, yeah. That's just <laughs> that's just our regular Tuesday night. You yeah, know? that was that was a Thursday. It was play. <laughs> <laughs> and then I looked at her and she goes, you do one, I do one. I said, eh, OK, <laughs> go. Let's do it. <laughs> Fuck it. We're By the way, out till like two. <laughs> By the way, this is this was supposed to be like a, like a girl's night kind of thing because I ruined it. He did. Um, <laughs> but no, Tess, we've had Sausage Fest like three episodes. Yeah. So for the ladies here, what would be the equivalent for like a female Sausage Fest? Like, would it be like a like a clam fest? Like a Taco pussy party? Tuesday. It's a clam bake. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I was going to ask, like, what food stuffs would you guys use to describe your vaginas? Because that's Taco what will make Tuesday. the episode. Clam bake? No? Yeah, sure. Clam yeah, bake is fine. Clam bake. Danny, cheer up. This is supposed to be fun. You're supposed to <laughs> rib me. Be like, no, make a pastrami sandwich. Or I, did, I did see, I did <laughs> no. see um, an emoji today that said, if a girl sends you a snail, what she's saying is she wants to slime your face. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> so I don't know if like escargot. There you go. <laughs> Face escargot. <laughs> I mean, isn't that what it's called? The snail trail? Okay, I don't know. Basically. <laughs> what do you mean you don't know, Danny? <laughs> Danny, you're being so reserved that I don't know. Are you are is what grandma are you doing in here? the room with yeah. you? No, my grandma's not here. I'm all by myself. <laughs> maybe she needs a drink. Yeah, mm. well, maybe I do need a drink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's up with this Danny right now. I had, so reserved. <laughs> I just I I don't know. Here Why'd I you am. clean it up for me, Daddy? Seriously, come on now. <laughs> you know me better than that. <laughs> that's true. That's true. I think a pussy party would be good, but you know, yeah. that's not really food. Well. But plus, I don't think Podbean or Apple will let me put pussy in the title. They wouldn't let me put cock, so I'm assuming. Oh, they really? might. They might. Tess, what's your favorite open mic? My favorite, honestly, I think it's players. 
players. Yeah. Just because I like that crowd a lot. Mm-hmm. I like every, every um, person that goes to that one. And then I love the wings. I just do. And those, wings, to- those wings are bullshit. I don't like, I like wings. them. They're fatty and I like fatty wings. <laughs> Ew, fatty. That's what you should call uh, this episode, Fatty Wings. <laughs> <laughs> fatty Wings. Yeah, chicken shouldn't be all fatty, man. Mm-hmm. And like me, a little fat. Last the other night, uh, I went to Cheers. <laughs> I went to Cheers and I went and got carnitas. And I told the waiter, I said, "Hey, just tell him to give me more of the fat." And the waiter came back and said, "They don't know how to do that." <laughs> <laughs> I go, it must be a skinny person serving, huh? California. Must be. <laughs> must be. Uh, you should tell the guys what type of guys you're into. Oh, I'm a chubby chaser. She likes some big. Gotta amount, have so. 300 to do something. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, that's a big boy. It is. <laughs> I like to climb. <laughs> <laughs> Give me something to mount, man. Don't hurt when skinny guys approach me. I'm like, bro, bro, bro I already feel bruises and you're hurting me. <laughs> Step away. <laughs> Step away. I can't. You can't? No. If I, I was ruined, skinny guy. I was ruined in high school, guys. I had my first O by a heavyweight wrestler. Oh, okay. Well, that will do it. So now you're addicted. I'm addicted. Addicted to fat boys. I know it's a guaranteed O, is what I know. I, I mean, I uh, as a fat guy, I'm yeah, pretty sure I disappoint this for <laughs> <laughs> <Or> me. <laughs> I I have fucked plenty of fat guys, and let me tell you, it is not a guarantee. <laughs> no, I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm a writer too, so I make sure I get mine. I don't know. Uh, uh, there you go. Well, yeah, yeah. Gotta have a good dick, though. I mean, I don't care. I'm picky gotta. to stay You're- on my roster. <laughs> You're picky. Like what's picky. what's what's your draft? Let's hear this. My draft. Like it's got to have some girth. I got to feel you. You well, know, I mean, and, and yeah, I'm not I'm not uh, like abyss or nothing like that. I didn't have my kids natural. So there's been no mess with the plumbing situation. <laughs> I'm all intact. Right. Came how the house was built. So I need to feel you. <laughs> She's like, I didn't wreck my pussy with these fucking yeah. kids. So I want, I want <laughs> legit a cock to wreck this pussy. Like, <laughs> I think that's most it. women, though. Yeah, uh, I think mean, I just started this way. I just became <laughs> into this. You know what? This is what I need. This is what I want. I'm not willing to. So 150 guy pounds. He approaches you. And you're like, nah, I'm not interested. Yeah, no. Jason Ooh. Momoa walks up to you and says, "Jason Momoa is different. He's, he's probably three hundred. He's probably three hundred pounds. Yeah. That's he's true. big in yeah. the areas that I need him okay. to be in shoulders. So he doesn't have to be a squishy guy. He could be a big... be just as long as he's a big guy. Okay, you know? I get you. Yeah, so, there's like six five. You know, pretty. So five two three fifty. Not doing it. No. <laughs> <laughs> No. Little human cannonball action. Five sevens barely even get an open. No. Three inches yeah. of dangling fury just waiting for you. Uh, I'm, you five, find I'm it. Five, five. You gotta I gotta at least look up to kiss you. Like <laughs> come on. What is it with that? Because I know a lot of women that are like, I won't date anyone that's you shorter than me. Like is if that I, look like I could beat your ass? <laughs> or take you, overcome you, like overpower you? No. She's like one of these hot Mexican bitches that gets all like fiery. Like if I could beat your ass, homie, it's not going to work. I will beat out. your ass. Like, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> <laughs> if I could beat your ass, nah, I'm good. I got a hot temper. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't There'll do it with skinny guys. I just push you. <laughs> <laughs> Or you'll be coming right. around the corner and I'm going to come around the corner. And I'm just going to lay you out like a linebacker. Like that's, just, <laughs> that's true. That is true. Or you do the typical thing. Take your sandals off and just beat the shit out of them. Those chunklas. <laughs> yeah. Hey, throw, them, yeah. throw them like daggers. <laughs> <laughs> um, fuck. I had a question and I just fucking forgot it. What are you high? How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is the norm for me. <laughs> <laughs> you going yeah sure whatever yeah when i ask I you something it. he's going senile early yeah 100 uh, percent. who me you yeah 
I mean, probably. So there were, we were out, what was it, Saturday? Yeah. And there were six of us there. Nick was the second youngest. And by far, if you asked anybody, he was the oldest man there. Oh, guaranteed. He's the oldest man in every room I've ever been in. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. Hold on. And I was technically the oldest in the room, but he was, He's, he, yeah. Yeah. No. He so was we, born old. We went you have axe throwing. tendencies, Nick. Huh? Do you have grandpa tendencies? I mean, yeah. I you fall asleep watching TV. Werther's. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck Werther's. It's all about that strawberry candy with the strawberry Ew, filling inside. Those are gross. That tells me everything I need to know about you. <laughs> <laughs> this is the last podcast I'm doing. If you like those <laughs> way better than Werther's Tess, would you agree? No, no. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm a Werther's girl. Yeah. Give me that caramel, baby. <laughs> all right. So what happened on Saturday? Oh, so no. First of all, we're going axe throwing and mm-hmm. it, it doesn't land. So literally all I'm doing is walking from one point, picking up the axe, walking <laughs> back. I'm like I said, you know, to everyone there, it's like I'm basically playing fetch with yourself <laughs> with a fucking axe, just walking back and forth. <laughs> I was sweaty and then we ate and I was tired and they were like, we're going to keep doing stuff. And I was like, I'm ready for bed. <laughs> it was like seven o'clock Where you on a Saturday. <laughs> Where'd you guys go to like sauced? No, we went. So we went to Smart Axe and Folsom, and then we walked up the street to Plank, which mm. damn good burgers and f- stuff. Yeah, I've been there. Good stuff. And then we to... went over to what's the name of that fucking place? The ice cream shop. Um, Leatherbeats. No, no, no Folsom. Folsom. Mm. Um, it's not Handles. No, uh, I don't know what it's it, called. It's but... Like, yeah, but uh, but you you checked out? Did you leave? No, no, he, he stuck it out. You stuck he it was, out. He was a soldier. You slept hard on Saturday night, dude. I woke up and my right arm was so sore. I texted Rob. I was like, I couldn't even jack off if I wanted to. <laughs> did <laughs> you, even, you were trying to kill it? Did you even make any of them? Yeah. I did. Oh, OK, good. All right. OK, you get a little more points on your man card now. That's cool. I sent you a picture that Kim sent me that where he had a bullseye. Oh, nice. And, yeah, yeah it, was, it was my first throw. <laughs> and after that, you just like that. <laughs> oh right? dude after that we started keeping score not one landed done you had <laughs> one perfect game yeah. <laughs> i did I, I that had... happens in careers right mm-hmm. yeah i was i was like the browns it was complete zeros across the board yeah. sucked but yeah but just between you and annie you guys were trying to throw it through the fucking wall so that's what you do when you no, get an axe not. You pretend it's somebody you hate and you just chuck it. Who were you chucking it at? I don't know. I really wasn't. I was just trying to (laughs) fucking chuck it. He's like, I'm not going to say my wife's name. I'm not going to say my wife's name. She's right there. She's right here. She's going to chuck some at me. (laughs) She's really going to beat him with a chancla. Now, but I will say this, though. All right, ladies, tell me if you're like this. Rob's wife, lovely lady. We'll literally take a picture. Oh, fuck. Every three seconds. Like, no yes. joke. We took a step and it was like, oh, let me get a picture of this. And it's like, no. we just we we just stepped. She took a picture of Rob and I walking together from behind. <laughs> like we were it was fucking, really romantic. Yeah. That's like, so sweet. <laughs> like, ladies, do you do that? Just take pictures every three seconds? No. Of my kids at a football game or something like that. I'll be paparazzi. She I always I always get yelled at by my There's daughter because I'm not taking pictures. Way, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I'm not. I'd rather my, live the moment. My young baby daddy, he's like that. Yeah. Yeah. I oh, just... yeah. She likes young guys, too. Oh, well, yeah, no, we heard. I, I have an older oh. baby daddy and a younger baby daddy. So I'm oh, differentiating. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she get around. <laughs> <laughs> so you're so left out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I did. Um, I wasn't looking for him, but he fell in my lap. He did more than fell in your lap. <laughs> yeah. Got back up, fell again. We were, the, got back we were up. together nine years. We have a 10 year old. So. Oh, okay. I see how that works. Yeah. We've been, the math over there? Like six. <laughs> we've been separated for like six. Oh, so. okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Good math. Good math skills. And then I have a 20 year old. He's in the army. Oof. Yeah, I wish I could send mine to the fucking army. <laughs> Why would you do that? Get him out of the house. Oh, that's <laughs> the worst. 
I don't know. You should look into it for Owen. No. <laughs> this young fuck. Fuck yeah. My kid would be doing ROTC. Isn't that what you do in high school? Start gearing him up for that. No. Right. I don't even know if Folsom would have one. Yeah, they, they probably do. do. 100%. There's enough white. Are you going to players here. tonight? Yes, ma'am. All right. What time you guys got to leave for that? It doesn't start. I already late. put myself 30. on the list. So. Oh, you can do that. With some. Who runs that one? <laughs> uh, Julian Lacrosse. There you go. Who? <laughs> Julian Lacrosse. <laughs> Lacrosse. Okay. He's, Lacrosse. Scheduled, he's scheduled in a few weeks. He's a. Uh, He's all right. He's a good guy. Honestly, a mood productions. I'm going to plug him. Oh, oh, look at that. As long as you're not plugging other people's podcasts. No. That shit annoys the fuck. This is me. my first podcast, too, guys. Woo, we popped your cherry. Uh, yeah, it was, <laughs> I thought it was funny. She was. She, we were emailing back and forth, and she's like, this is my first one. Any tips? And I felt weird because I was like, I mean, just be yourself. Like, I don't know what <laughs> tips we have. Maybe like watch a different episode and see if you can last. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> That'd be my tip. I did watch a few. Oh, did you? Oh, did you? Yeah. And that's how you get people to watch your fucking show. Uh. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we didn't get uh, pulled down for our last episode, so we can push it. Yeah, we can push to the limit. Pussy party. Uh. <laughs> I say this like right by my grandma's like sanctuary of knickknacks. <laughs> well, it's not like it's full of crosses or anything. So, you're oh, good. yeah, no, she's not that religious. <laughs> I bet you there's a picture of Jesus there, though. Oh, yeah, it's right by my picture. Oof. There's a picture of Jesus and then me. Wow. Yeah. I don't even know. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's because we're uh, maybe Bob, Jesus your my daddy. Uh, Portuguese. No, she means your your Zoom background, not oh, your fucking background. ethnic. Uh, that's the uh, married with children. Yeah, yeah, I thought so. I was like, "Where's that from?" Married with children. Cool. Married with children. What's your background, Rob? Well, I was born in 1952. <laughs> oh, happy <laughs> birthday! Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I've been in interview mode, so that's just kind of where. Uh, <laughs> that's why he's shaved. Usually, he's fucking. It is. Grizzly Normally he's way sexier. He's all like grizzly and hates his life. I oh, still hate my life. <laughs> <laughs> he just ah. turned fifty, right? Over the weekend, I did. Woo, old man now. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, and apparently, uh, guys don't ask your spouse if she wants to play with a fifty-year-old cock because it gets a weird look. Because uh, <laughs> <laughs> it makes, I guess she said it makes it sound like it was detached. <laughs> Right, you want to play with a fifty-year-old cock? <laughs> hey, I was joking mostly, but <laughs> I mean, it could have been worse. Like she could have been sucking it. He could have been like, "How's that fifty-year-old cock?" No, taste? see, yeah, yeah, do that. <laughs> like next. He's like, Mike, "I'll never get a blowjob again." If her mouth is full, you shut the fuck up. So, <laughs> <laughs> don't even moan. Don't you say yeah. anything. That was, uh, yeah, just okay. I'm not going to ruin a good thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, does anybody have any other questions before we get to our cool thing? No. Cool thing. Yeah. It's uh, ultra popular still in Ukraine. I don't know why they'd be listening to us. Because they they're are. a sad, sad country. You gotta do something <laughs> while you're waiting to get bombed. <laughs> Jesus. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Tess, you said you listened. Did you listen to a full episode? No. Did you listen, quiz. listen? <laughs> she couldn't do it. Yeah, it's, a, it's all right. Most people are like, I've never listened. So you're way ahead of the curve. Uh, so we do this ultra popular thing called Inside the Comic Studio. Brilliant. Yes. But before we get into it, though, Tess, plug your social media, plug any shows you got coming up. Help plug Etsy. I don't know. Plug whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> So I do have a comedy uh, channel on Instagram. Uh, if you type in at follow, F-O-L-L-O-W, my funny, all spelled out, that is moi. Um, I've got telenovela this Sunday. I'll be opening for that show at Stab Theater at 8 p.m. Um, then I'm doing Smokes and Jokes on the 26th. I'm excited for that because I'll be performing with Wendy Lewis cool. um, and that's going to be at 9 p.m. You can follow me at the Instagram at follow my funny for ticket information. 
It is at an indisclosed location in 420 Friendly. Uh, September 4th, I will be the headliner for the Queen of Sheba stage at the Broadway Festival. Um, and in, I would say about 9 p.m. Um, for that. And then October 8th, I'm going to be doing a Fresno show back home. And I just found out my headliner is Joey Medina from Latino Kings of Comedy. Nice. Hell so yeah. I am super juiced to be performing with him and be able to meet him and put that on my credits. Yeah. Hell yeah. Nice. Yeah. And I'm actually going to do a merch table. Awesome. What <laughs> those, merch do you have? Those Fresno shows are really important. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I'm hoping to pack it. They're supposed to be able to seat like 200 people. Um, Dope. Going to be good good times. So Nice. Yeah, Jesse Rivera hooked me up when I've been looking at uh, stickermule.com. Mm-hmm. And every two weeks they have a special. So like I got 50 buttons for like nine bucks the other day. And I got 50 vinyl stickers <clears throat> today for 19. Nice. Um, and then I have uh, I have a cricket. So I'm going to make some shirts and magnets and stuff like that. So craft yeah. day at Tessa's house. Fuck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Come get yeah. your comedy shit go- going on with me. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. I'll be right over. Yeah. By yeah. the way, since you mentioned stab Jesse, I know you're not listening, but I'm just going to put it out there in the ethers. Fucking message me back. God damn it. About he fucking, I asked him if we could record it stab. He got back to me and he said, yeah, sure. We just need to work something out. Jesse Rivera, you're talking about the wrong Jesse. You're talking about Jesse Jones. Yeah, she mentioned stab. That's why I said oh. stab. Oh, okay. Yeah, hey. I, I'm I'm going to be doing telenovela with Jesse Rivera. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but Jesse owns stab. Different Jesse. Different yeah. Jesse. White <laughs> Jesse. And that's why I'm putting it out there that he needs to message me back. Other Jesse, we don't talk. I don't know. I, I think he hates <laughs> it. I thought he was talking know. about Jess Roberts at first because I know she's a part of Stab too. I'm like, what is going on, Nick? What are you trying to Right? <laughs> what is he trying to say? I'm trying to say Stab needs to get the fuck back to me. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. He ghosted me. And he did the one thing I hate that Danny does. He left me on red. You're such a teenage girl. No, that's bullshit. <laughs> You're such a Tess, teenage girl. Tess, do you agree that that is bullshit leaving you on red? Yes. Yes. And then I also think it's very immature for individuals to flash on someone who hasn't been able to explain why you were unread. Because so I've had that situation too, to where I had a busy day or I had things going on where I couldn't reply and didn't well, want to one do a day short is reply. One thing. Exactly. Weeks but I've had hour. people like within two hours, like flash yeah. on me. Oh yeah. I won't do that. Yeah. So it all depends. I think it's all circumstance. Or I'll just be like, like when it comes to Danny, I'm just like, that's fucking Danny, whatever. <laughs> She's done it to me enough where I'm desensitized. Good, good. That's what I hope. That's what I hope. Just hopefully. I, I always look at it as though she's living her best life at that moment. And, you know, right? she'll get back to me when she does. And I want to hear about exactly. it. Well, it sucks when I ask you a question and you leave me on red. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say that. Sometimes, We're going to move on, though. <laughs> sometimes, though, I can't even process the question you sent me. So I'm like, uh, I'll just get back to it and then I forget. Or you won't answer the question. You'll just reply saying, hey, send me that omelet video. <laughs> <laughs> you motherfucker. <laughs> oh, man, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, just so everyone knows, you can't send the omelet thing over Facebook Messenger. It is apparently offensive. It won't let oh. you. Okay. It won't what let you send porn. Thing? Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to see her tonight, right? Episode. <laughs> you, I'll show you tonight. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's yeah. gross. You don't want to. It's gross. <laughs> yeah. That's gross. Uh, Danny, okay. what do you got? Um, I got a couple of things going on uh, mm-hmm. this Saturday. If our podcast gets released in time, you can come to just kicking it in Roseville. I'm on Ian Massengill's show. So come and watch the final mental breakdown that he's about to have. Yeah. And then um, he's going to be there tonight. He's hosting tonight. Oh, good. Well, I can't wait to watch it. <laughs> um, and then Sunday, August 28th, I'll be at um, uh, where the fuck am I going to be? I'm going to be somewhere in Sacramento. Check out my Instagram page. I'm doing a show. <laughs> it starts at eight. Um, and Regina Givens is headlining. So it's going to be a great show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I got a lot of stuff going on. So come and catch me before I go out of town again. Nice. 
Robert. Where are you going next, Danny? Oh, I'll tell you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't know. That's why. <laughs> Uh, get my side project. Fat guys need love too. My first guest <laughs> will be Tess. <laughs> I'm down. Hey, I'll uh, be a sponsor. The fuck? <laughs> actually, uh, the side project is the stand up dad's podcast. I do that with my buddy, Mike. We talk about parenting and throw in some dick jokes. Um, I'm down for that too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what the fuck we talked about this week, but a new episodes come out on Sunday. Uh, give it a listen. Yeah, and his most recent episode about swearing was great. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, follow me on Twitter at the big Nick J. It is popping. Um, I will be featured on Gutting the Sacred Cow. Uh, I tore apart the bloated movie that is There Will Be Blood. Um, <laughs> pure garbage. Don't watch it, guys. Two and a half hours of shit. I um, what? No? I wouldn't watch it. Oh, well, good. Yeah. Don't. It sucks. Okay. <laughs> um, and then I'm supposed to be on some other movie music podcast. I don't know when. Um, so I don't know why I'm plugging it. All I'm right. an idiot. Never mind. Okay. Moving on. Oh, merch. We got merch. Click the link. Merch, you, can get, merch. you can get me naked on a horse. You can get this beautiful uh, logo yeah. right here. It's pretty mm-hmm. awesome. All right. Apron with Nick naked on a horse. And yes. it says, Gag you on guys, there. I want something with Nick it's naked a, on a horse. Yeah. So buy it. The thing don't is, tease me, Nick. Don't make me go to the page and there's not one there. <laughs> the thing is, I made a joke that Rob wouldn't wear an apron with me naked on a horse. And he was like, no, I totally would. So I bought it for him and he took a picture just wearing that. Fuck let, yeah. me, let me show you guys one apron that I'm working on a bit because mm-hmm. I want to talk about my inner dude. My her uh, CJ. Could they call me Chuck Jr.? Look at this. This is not amazing. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a big boy. Yeah. You know? <laughs> That's, That's hairy, funny. too. Yeah. It looks just but like I had, I had CJ blasted on the panza. Nice. Oh, my inner Chuck Jr. He's got a little <laughs> bit of dicky do going on. <laughs> <laughs> my son likes me to wear it when he comes over on the weekends and I make pancakes. <laughs> is that all you're wearing? No. Oh, for her oh, son. I'm sorry. I, didn't, I didn't hear Christ. son. Hold on. I didn't hear son at first. I haven't met a guy that gets turned on by that yet, Danny. <laughs> and if you do, you got questions. Yeah. Fuck it. They're not it might last. be just right for me. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, Tess, uh, inside the comic studio, we ask all comedians the same five questions. Mm. So, the first question is first joke that landed well. I would say my what I end with all the time now is my dick sucking bit I wrote for Keith's uh, um, class where I talk about defending my inner cochina. And I start listing off a bunch of names <clears throat> defending why I know how to suck dick. Just uh, j- say a little bit of it. Just the just the dick sucking part, the, all the different terms you have. So I start saying that I've been sucking dick since the 88 Olympics and I still hold records that they've been asking for this pretty little mouth to cut out out of retirement since the nineties, that I'm a soul collector, a toe paralyzer, a throat goat, a dick devourer, a sword swallower, a fellatio freak, a gulping goddess. I'm the master of the pink karaoke machine. I'm a gooch goblin, a sack sucker, a chorizo chomper, a cabeza cabrona. (laughs) (laughs) That's some of the list. (laughs) And I've been Back challenged sucker. recently uh, to do like an all uh, white version and then all Hispanic version. Oh, so, you know Spanish? Uh, Spanglish. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I got all that from like the Urban Dictionary, just tweaking stuff. <laughs> the Urban <laughs> that's Dictionary, awesome. that's a wealth of information. <laughs> it is. And then I asked some people I know. <laughs> I think throat How would goats you describe? <laughs> Throat goat's good. Throat goat's I heard, good. I heard someone. I, I was called that. That's how it started. Really? Mm-hmm. No one's ever called me a throat goat. <laughs> yeah. <'Cause, 'cause> <laughs> and when I, I performed <laughs> at Crawdads, 
uh, I had a beautiful young African-American girl come up to me afterwards. And she said, you know, you speak with a lot of confidence up there. Are they facts? I said, oh, you're checking my receipts. I said, this is flattery at its best. You know what I mean? And then I was like, I looked at her and I said, yes, facts. And she goes, my boyfriend knew it. He told me to come talk to you. (laughs) Gave her a tip. I should have took her information to see if it worked. (laughs) All right. That was the best. (laughs) Next question is favorite thing about the local comedy scene. Honestly, guys, I'm going to tell you. I love the family feel that I get from the comedy scene. I've been meeting other comics from other areas that have been coming and they, it's, they don't have this in their areas. They don't have that type of camaraderie and brotherhood and, you know, helping one another. Like all I see is hand over hand over hand, wanting to help, whether it's hosting production um, podcasts, open mics, uh, stage, um, you know, guys wanting to help me do green screen, you know, all different type of stuff. So that's what I see. You know what I mean? I see a huge community willing to help one another. Is there politics in it? Yeah, it happens in everything. You know what I mean? You're not going to be able to please everyone. But for the majority, from what I've experienced so far, and I think I've kind of been out there, out there, I haven't done a lot of the clicky main stream comedy places and open mics and things like that because of what I hear. Right. So I'm sticking into areas that I'm still feeling that genuine love and flow of comedy. I think. So you're avoiding the comedy spot. <laughs> I'm glad you said it. Not me. I did not think that, <laughs> <laughs> but I have not been there. <laughs> All right. But uh, I am thinking of doing an improv class through there. I'm between them and laughs unlimited. So nice. just cause I want to try a different, different house. You know what I mean? Sure. Cause I think it's going to be different. I think it's like Harry Potter. Huh? Please don't tell me you're a Harry Red Potter houses. fan. No, but I'm just saying, though, how there's different houses, you know what I mean, within the Harry Potters and they're kind of those alliances and things like that. That's what it kind of reminds me of. Fucking yeah. Mike Gray is going to come at that reference. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, oh my God. Oh, come oh, That's the Harry only thing Potter. that came to mind right away, guy. OK, <laughs> give me time. I could have came up with a better one. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, next question. Uh, the exact opposite. One thing you dislike or would like to see changed in the local scene other than Danny too. I don't know if I would change anything. I mean, I think everyone's kind of doing what opportunities are coming to them or trying to create new opportunities. Um, I would say just to be respectful. That's what I would say to change the mindset of we're all trying to do something doesn't matter if you think it's funny or not it's the same thing with the audience right there's a fan out there for everybody just be respectful that's all I, there's comics that have gone up that i don't even laugh one time but i don't think anything bad of them you know what i mean or worse of them you know but somebody else was laughing their ass off you know right, right. so teach his own probably robert best <laughs> <laughs> no he no. doesn't come to open mics no, it's that one guy that did the crying. Remember the long hair blonde dude? What's his name? Chris Allen. I can't. I walk out every time. Because <laughs> he cries? He just does stupid improv stuff lately. Uh, I just can't. Last time he was, what was he doing? Johnny Depp? He was doing. I don't, I, I'm not in there. <laughs> <laughs> exact to Mundo. <laughs> I get in, I do my set, and I leave. Go to as karaoke. Soon as I can. Go yeah. to karaoke. <laughs> A karaoke. All right. Uh, <laughs> next question is favorite local comedian. Favorite local comedian. You could say Danny D as well. <laughs> Danny not, D not, is definitely one of one of my one of my faves. <laughs> Danny D is definitely one of my faves. But honestly, every time I hear her and more and more, and she's been hosting and she's been kind of doing more and more. Um, and I don't think she gets and even knows how funny she is, is Sarah Dutcher. 
I love, love, love Sarah. I love her spirit. I love her demeanor. I love her joking on her past life, like being, finding that humor in it. You know what I mean? Like her and Jackie posted the other day that they kept getting called sluts because of the little dresses they were wearing. They're like, it's fucking hot. You know what I mean? And so the next day I wore a slutty dress in honor of that shit. You know what I mean? Because fuck that. That's right. (laughs) All right. And then um, last question is advice to new comedians. Advice to new comedians, don't give up. Don't give up. We all get blocks, you know, whether that's writing, whether that's wanting to go to open mic, whether that's to perform, whether whatever it is, you know what I mean? If life is getting in the way, whatever, you could stop for a week and just go back out. You know what I mean? Don't give up. Yeah, don't do what I did, which was give up. Uh, <laughs> Shit was way too late. It's okay if people want to give up. It's fine uh, if they want to. Who was but. it? It was it was Johnny Casino. It was so honest. He was just like, don't and he was start. being a hundred percent serious. Yeah, he was like, don't start. And he's like, if you want to give up, give up because more people need that stage than you. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I was like, that's fucking honest. And guess what? He gave up. <laughs> he had a baby. I mean, shit. That's giving up right there. <laughs> How my dare thing, he? My thing is, is I think right is that know what you're trying to put in it. Don't expect more out of it. You know what I'm saying? If if you're giving up and you're not doing the open mic, don't expect his stage time. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So know that you're going to get what you put into it. So that's what I'm saying. If you don't have any other reason to give up, don't give up. You know what I'm saying? Still hit it. Still try still, you know what I mean? But if you're not going to put in the work, then like you said, give up, give people that stage time. Don't expect it. Be yeah. fair about it. Put the work in. Mm -hmm. Nice. All right. Um, so that's it for the interview portion. I have one random topic we we should discuss. I think it's very important, especially for the ladies, since this was going to be ladies' night. (laughs) Okay. All right. And apparently design vaginas are a thing now. It doubled in 2022 for one surgeon. Thanks to tight leggings. What? So women are flocking to purchase a designer vagina after ultra tight leggings have become uncomfortable or embarrassing. Thanks to the dreaded camel toe. Like, is that, is that a thing you guys worry about? Cause there's men out there. that enjoy it. There's vagina rejuvenation stuff. You know what I mean? Like where they'll do treatments to kind of prevent your, the natural, skin and things from mm-hmm. gravity taking over. Um, but to surgically clip them. Yeah, no. Who doesn't like a hanging low pussy? Come on now. <laughs> I have a joke about that. I talk about like these days, cause I just turned 48 with my girlfriends um, that we talk about different stuff. And I said, and recently the subject has been how they don't like that. Their pussy lips don't match anymore. And I go, and I've just come to realize, ladies, that they're just like eyebrows. You know, they're sisters. They're not twins. It's okay if one hangs low than the other. I go, I hear from guys, they haven't been the same since like puberty. (laughs) One's always hung higher than the other one. Mm -hmm. I go, and when you lay down, honestly, they don't give a fuck. And no guys ever went, oh, you have uneven lips. I'm out. (laughs) Peace out, man. Never. Peace out. <laughs> and there's always the and Jim You Norton. probably had that guy that sucked on them too much, and that's why they're drapey curtains, you know? <laughs> Could be. Oh, so, Jim Norton has a thing about how he likes them to look like hastily packed luggage. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I think he called it a pile of pussy. Uh, <laughs> that's just from fucking all those prostitutes, though, man. <laughs> well, yeah, but a lot of the ones he would fuck were guys. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so i have a question it says it's to shrink the labia menorah is there a labia majora yes (laughs) is there it fucking appalls me that you're a fucking married man (laughs) what is that your wife's pussy (laughs) is so sad (laughs) why because i don't know the scientific name it's it's a pussy i know what to do with the pussy i just don't know its individual is that are are we gonna fact check i don't even know what a labia menorah is Oh, thank you. See, 
See, <laughs> Jewish people light candles on them. I knew. I was like, does the menorah mean something else? <laughs> They're smaller. They have the big ones and the and the little ones. Why does the Portuguese know this? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't know what it was either. <laughs> oh, you motherfuckers! All of you. <laughs> and the menorah is like a candlestick, right? So what no. is it? A labia menorah. It just there's means like, there's smaller. Six of them then? Is it just there's six of them? I think it's eight. No, eight? there's two. There, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> what? So and then, and then do you have to line them up to where they're like go in the order? Cement, you know, smaller. Oh, you can't bring up a picture of that. YouTube's not going to let us have that. Yeah, I, you better. I might. Yeah, you're gonna. You're asking for editing. <gasps> oh. You didn't go to images. Uh, the labia majora are a prominent part of the cutaneous skin. I don't even know what the okay, fuck. What the hell means. is a cutaneous skin fold? It forms the folds that cover the labia minora clitoris vulva vestibule. I didn't know that was a thing. Vestibular bulbs. Didn't know that was a thing. Bartholin's glands. Ladies, didn't know do about you know that these? at all. So I just recently learned that it looks like a freaking butterfly. The whole anatomy of the female genitalia and people have been making art mm-hmm. from their like scans and stuff. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> mm-hmm. So let's okay. see. Let's keep going. Uh so That's probably pe- for skinny bitches though, you know, because skinny bitches can wear those tight ass leggings and then they pull them up super high. Of course your pussy lips are gonna hang low. Well my thing is like it's like, like a wedgie. Wear, wear something looser. Well those aren't in style. Don't they have like the Kardashians were the ones that talked about the little like barrier that you put in front of the lips. I have no idea. So it protects you from the the material of the pants you mean or whatever. A Aren't you wearing pad? underwear? No, but it's like something that they put in the front of their pants, right above the lips, to where it's just flush and they don't get the camel toe. I bet you, pad? Chloe Kardashian, kind of like a mouth a guard, but pussy. pussy lip guard, maybe. <laughs> I'm with it's Nick. Just, just buy, just buy, le- like bigger clothes. I like this. The issue is more than just dealing with camel toe. Some women simply refuse to swap beauty for pain and want to wear trendy tights despite the agony. Is camel toe painful? No, I think because it it's so tight, and if it's it can pull. Okay. Like there's times when I have to adjust. Like you guys have to adjust your balls. Yeah. Like this so. is hideous, and this probably costs a million dollars. I'm not going to reduce your... my balls because it's uncomfortable in my shorts. Right. Right. You yes, think Olivia yes. Newton-John was uncomfortable in Greece wearing those tight ass pants? No, <laughs> she wasn't worried about her her pussy lips. She's feeling no pain now. Oh, this is what Tess was talking <laughs> about. Uh, skims line to make the crotch area more suitable for all labia sizes. He's all inclusive. So it's the crotch area. It's how they sew the crotch area. Um, so if they were able to sew the crotch area to hold the lips like you guys have underwear to hold your sacks, mm-hmm. it would alleviate the problem. So it's the designer issue. It's not a, a fucking go get your lips chopped off issue. Yeah. <laughs> Never oh. do that. One woman I wonder if they could put Botox in them. You no. just put Botox them. anywhere. <laughs> just pump them. No. <laughs> One woman. Poison. It's going to deaden the skin around her. Put- no. <laughs> what dick not- in that dead in the skin? What are you talking about? Well, this surgery can also do it, too, because one woman complained of losing sensation below the belt due to her botched labiaplasty, Boom. highlighting the risks of surgery, infection, scar tissue, reduced sensitivity. He tipped the clit is what he did. That was Bummer. I mean, I not knowing a lot about like the vagina's parts. Mm-hmm. I know not to tip the clit. So, I mean, there's that, Rob. <laughs> I know what that is. <sighs> it's a mystery, but I know what it is. Okay. okay you got to follow this up with that one I sent you about the tips. Since you're talking about tips. Oh, uh, the hair check. Mm-hmm. I thought this was just weird. So apparently uh, this woman tried different hairstyles to see which one would make her the best tips. And here's what happened. The piggy tails. Yeah, I decided we're picked. Yeah, like a twelve-year-old right little it. girl. Of course, you're that's gonna fucking gross. Them. Now, that's what guys like. Guys like little girls. No, mm-hmm. or yeah, no. The handlebars. Yeah. Okay. That. I 
I don't know. For me, a ponytail does it more than a uh, pigtail because this pigtail is, is the little girl thing. This is gross if that's the young girls. Yeah, this is gross if this is true. They told us to do this in Girl Scouts to sell more cookies. Yep, that makes sense. That's just fucking gross. If I was a girl, a Girl Scout troop leader, I'd be like all of you hair and pigtails. Let's go. Look at this, Danny. It's exactly what those. you said. Yep. Sexualization of young girls by older men. But it's not. OK, so like back in the day in the 1800s or even before that, like men naturally are attracted to young women that are like of childbearing. They were all done because young because everyone died at 30. OK, but <laughs> I'm saying that's just naturally what guys are attracted to, like childbearing. Oh, they they set but- off different hormones. They set off different hormones than a, than an old bitch like me. No. Yeah, what I also think it is, but what I also think it is, is that women and men are not in the same level maturity wise and in the same age. So guys my age, they're looking at young girls. Some of them. Majority. Okay. Looking for 15 (laughs) years, 20 years younger. I'm not talking about little, little girls. But I'm just saying young, not like a six year old, like a 20 year old. Yeah, I'm talking like probably like 30s. You know what I mean? Maybe 20s. You know what I'm saying? Just younger. Now, when you say looking at, you say just looking at or pursuing both. Both. Yeah, I don't know. No. Because I want nothing to do with it. Well, you're it's also a grown ass married man. But yeah, you're not well, that. But I'm your age. I'm trying to tell you a lot of men have not matured at my age. You know what I mean? They're still mentality wise way younger. And so therefore they're looking for that match and it's younger. It's just no, I couldn't, I couldn't do that. Oh, look at the little rebel. Now he never looks like he would throw a rock at a child. (laughs) He's just so sweet looking. He like his school pictures. He doesn't look like he would throw a rock at a child. Like that's what makes him more dangerous. I know he looks like the one that would get bullied and he's bullying. Apparently he found a snake in the backyard. And for oh, the past hell no. 40 minutes, he's been trying to get me to come out there. Inappropriate. <laughs> Did he just, catch it? I guess. I don't know. I just I'm trying to pay attention to this. Like a little <laughs> baby. It's like a little baby rattlesnake. And like, his new pet, like, he's already going to have a cage for it by the time you're no, done with this. I think it's uh, what do you call it? They call them um, sharp tails. They're like these little snakes that get like maybe five inches long. Oh. And they eat slugs. Ooh. So I'm pretty sure that's what he found. Sounds yeah. like a metaphor for a penis. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah. But we found several in the yard, and I guess he found another. And if it's a rattlesnake, I'm a fucking horrible parent because he's going to die. <laughs> but, the, the wife's not there to handle the snake issue? Oh, she is terrified of snakes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if you just say snake, she runs out of the room. So yeah. she's gonna, not going to be any help. I'm going to try that next time. Go. <laughs> so yeah after this i get to run out there and see if he's killed the snake or not well it starts with killing young animals i was about to say if he if you go out there and he's just braining it with a rock no you no, got no. Some issues right too. and he like your, the, your cat's next he does the <laughs> mice and men thing where it's just he love oh, loves him to death oh like elvira <laughs> i just want to love you and hug you and squeeze you and hold that's you. exactly it so yeah and I, then he pets too hard and it breaks his fucking neck <laughs> he did that to a butterfly he's like why isn't it flying I'm like because you fucking killed it that's so, what i used to do with guys but then i realized that's not mm-hmm. what you do the you trap in your labia majora and just yeah. wouldn't let go get that big majora <laughs> <laughs> i think it's weird that you would get the labia minora surgically altered like wouldn't it be the majora isn't that the bigger of maybe the two? they got floppy too you know, if you don't like my pussy, we don't have to have sex. There you go. Somebody else. Will. I mean, they kind of offer that right after you have a baby when they offer you the party stitch. I've heard it. Called yeah, the I'm always like, stitch. show me up like I'm 12. Oh, oh my God. Just so he can bust open again. No, oh. he's not that big. <laughs> girl, I had a girl rip from end to end. Mm-mm-mm. No, I ripped with, with my daughter. Stitch. I ripped with uh. my daughter and I was like, show me. No, up, she like- ripped from end to end after when they went to have sex when she got the party stitch. oh oh yes oh, oh. so that's why when i was uh, when because i didn't do that they didn't offer that to me but when my sister did i was like uh you might want to rethink that <laughs> oh i didn't did he, rip either did it keep going oh god i don't know 
Oh, I mean, he's I in there. He's like, all right, we'll deal with this later. Yeah, you're ripped to shreds. I like that's it. Not, that way. That's not just mistaking a hole, bro. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Does anybody have anything else before we go? He just no. yelled at me. He said he's gone and it's your fault. <laughs> oh, <So. laughs> oh, no, he's probably going to cry. He's pissed. He's probably going to take his anger out on somebody tomorrow. The cat. <laughs> <laughs> protect your cat tonight rob <laughs> my next episode is how to avoid calls from the cps yeah. <laughs> tess thank you so much for thank coming you. on this was a great thank episode uh everybody stay safe i'll see you tonight yeah bye, bye.